Hello everybody, Interinteri back again with another video and today's video guys is going to be about exactly like the title is saying my top 5 reasons why I don't believe Novak Djokovic will end with most Grand Slam titles when it's all said and done I have done videos about Rafa Nadal in the past why I believe Rafa will end with most slams and my reasons to that I have given my reasons for why Rafa will end with most slams and now I will do a video about Novak why do I not believe Novak Djokovic the current world number one the overwhelming world number one the superior world number one why he will not end with most slams when it's all said and done without further ado let's get into the video guys I'm gonna start with number fifth place and go up to the number one number fifth place the least likely reason and number one place the most likely reason all right i'm gonna start on my number fifth place on number on my number fifth place i have rafa in my opinion is a better shot maker than Novak Djokovic nowadays that is that was not the case in the past when they were younger but in their mid 30s I truly believe Rafael Nadal is a better shot maker than Novak Djokovic Rafael Nadal can end points faster on clay for sure we all saw what happened in French Open in, in that final the zero to four shots Rafa out dueled Novak Djokovic he just outclassed him really I, th I think that Rafa won the zero to four shots points 53 points Rafa won of those points and Novak only 25 so you can see that but even on other surfaces I truly believe that in the later stages of their careers Rafa Nadal is a better shot maker than Novak Djokovic. That was not the case in the past. It, it really was not. Because Novak has a better serve than Rafa Nadal. Novak is much efficient than Rafa Nadal on fast surfaces. And Novak can put away players on fast surfaces. That is not the case on clay. But on fast surfaces, Novak, he could put away players in the past. I remember... Uh, when, when uh, Rafa lost to, no, to no, Novak Djokovic in the 2011 US Open final and one journalist after, the, after that final uh, asked Rafa what is now uh, uh, Novak has defeated you in the Wimbledon final 2011 and now he is defeating you in the US Open final the same year what is he doing better now that he, did, that he didn't do in 2010 because we all know that Rafa, he pretty much owned Novak Djokovic before that big breakthrough that Novak had in 2011. Do you know what Rafa answered for you who doesn't remember? I remember it. Rafa said like this, exactly like this. No, I don't feel... Because the journalist asked him, is his forehand better? Is his backhand better? Is his serve better? That's what the journalist asked him. And Rafa was answering like this. No, I'm not... He's not, his forehand is not better, his backhand is not better, his serve is not better than 2010. The thing that he has improved so much, he has cut down his arrows. That what he has improved so much. That was Rafa's answer to that journalist who asked him that question in, back in 2011, after that US Open final. So, in my opinion, Rafa Nadal is a better shot maker than Novak Djokovic this late in their careers. And some of you can say, but Inter, how can you say that? Novak Djokovic, he did 38 winners in that French Open final. And Rafa did only 31 winners. So, Novak does seven more winners than Rafael Nadal. Yeah, that's true. But you cannot look it that way, my friends. You have to look it on both sides. You have to look the unforced arrow stat as well. Novak Djokovic for sure does seven more winners than Rafa Nadal in that final. Rafa does 31 winners. Novak does 38 winners. 
But you have to look at the unforced error stat as well. Novak does 52 unforced errors in that final. 52. Four, 14 more unforced errors than winners does Novak Djokovic in that French Open final earlier this year. Rafa Nadal, he does only 14 unforced errors. So Rafa does 17 more winners. 17 more winners than unforced errors. Djokovic, 14 more unforced errors than winners. So you have to look the both sides. You, you cannot just look how many winners you do. You have to look how many unforced errors you do as well. And you have to compare the both stats. And when you compare the both stat, stats, Rafa Nadal, in my opinion, is a better shot maker than Novak Djokovic this late in his career. I remember that 2019 US Super Final between Rafa and Medvedev. For God's sakes, Rafa did over 60 winners in that final. You know that? Over 60 winners. So, but I have this opinion nowadays. In the past, like I, saw, like I said, when Novak had those golden years, 2011, when he won three Grand Slams that year, and 2015, also when he won three Grand Slams that, that year, he was a better shot maker than Rafa Nadal. But I don't feel that he's a better shot maker nowadays. Rafa Nadal is doing a lot of winners and not doing a lot of unforced errors. Djokovic is still doing a lot of winners, but he's doing much, much more unforced errors than, than Rafa Nadal nowadays, which was not the case when Novak was in, up, in his absolute peak, like it was in 2011 and 2015. Novak did a lot of winners back then, but not many unforced errors. And that is not the case nowadays. He's doing more unforced errors nowadays. So, on my fifth place, I have Rafa is a better shot maker than Novak Djokovic this late in their careers. All right? On, on my number fourth place, I have the next gens. Yeah, guys. Not only the next gens, to be quite honest, but in general, Raf, uh, Novak Djokovic is more vulnerable against other dudes than Rafa Nadal. Uh, we all know that Djokovic, uh, he has more troubles against players like Tsitsipas, Medvedev, Zverev. Uh, he has more troubles. Rafa Nadal, more or less, he owns these players. Djokovic doesn't do it. Djokovic has lost more against these next gens than what Rafa has done. And some of you can say, Inter, Djokovic has not lost against these, against these players in the slams. And yes, that's true. Medvedev has not defeated Novak in slams. Tsitsipas has not defeated Novak in slams. Zverev has not defeated Novak in slams. That is true. But they will do, trust me. Sooner or later, that day will come when these next gens and even team, team is not a next gen, it's an old gen, and team has actually already defeated Novak several times in slams. He has defeated him twice. 2017 in French Open, quarterfinal. 2019 French Open, semifinal. And yeah, I know team has defeated also in Rafa once in a slam. And, what, and that was in Astral Open earlier this year that, in that quarterfinal. Uh, so team is dangerous for Rafa also. Uh, but I feel the team is dangerous more for, for a player like Djokovic. Especially on clay in French Open. Uh, but team will start to defeat Novak on hard courts as well in this in these hard court slams like Austral Open and US Open. He will start doing it. Doing it. Trust me. Uh, in Wimbledon, I don't think so. The, uh, team is not ready to defeat Novak in Wimbledon yet because he's, in my opinion, team is a pretty horrible grass court player. Uh, not only team, but many of the other dudes who are, who who can play grass court tennis nowadays. Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal, more or less. Nobody else. I can put in Berrettini there as well. He's a pretty decent grass court player. At least better than Team and Zverev and Tsitsipas and all of the other dudes. So, Djokovic is much more vulnerable against other dudes. Not only the next gens. Look at, look, at, look, look at that match in 2018 French Open. Do you honestly believe a player, a journeyman like Cecinato, would have defeated Rafael Nadal? I don't care which surface. I don't care. Cecinato would have, he would not have defeated Rafa Nadal on hard courts, on grass, on clay, you name it. But he took out Djokovic in that quarterfinal match, 2018 French Open in four sets. And some of you can say, but Inter, Rafa has lost against Brown, against Darcy, against 
Russell, Kyrgios in Wimbledon. Yeah, that's true. But guys, you have to understand one thing. Once and for all, please guys, try to understand me when I say this. I'm not saying Radal has not lost against other dudes as well who are not named Federer, Djokovic or team. Like I, like I said, I, I, I mentioned those players who, has, who, who Rafa has lost in Wimbledon in the past. But you have to understand one thing. It is a different here. When Cecinato defeated Djokovic in that 2018 French Open quarterfinal, I swear to you guys, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen that match. Cecinato didn't, didn't, he didn't do his match of his life. He didn't do it. He did a great match, but he didn't, he didn't do his match of his life. Because Djokovic, he will, he's, he's, he's not Nadal. Djokovic will give you help on the way. He will make the victory for you easier by doing unforced errors, by throwing one or two, three or three games in a set, bad games, and giving a set away to you for free. Cecinato did absolutely not do his match of his life in that match against Djokovic French Open two years ago. Kyrgios did his match of his life when he defeated Nadal in 2014, in my opinion. Russell did his, did his match of his life when he defeated Nadal in 2012, in my opinion, in Wimbledon. Especially Russell's fifth set. Have you seen that fifth set? You have probably forgotten that, guys. It is eight years ago. Just please watch that fifth set from Russell. He played from another planet. He really hammered the ball in that fifth set. Rafa couldn't touch his serve in that fifth set. Russ, uh, Lucas Russell, he was crushing the ball. He was serving so many aces in that fifth set. Rafa, it, it, you just cannot do anything to that kind of masterclass performance like Russell did in that fifth set. Please try, please guys, just watch that fifth set from Russell if you have forgot that and you will understand what I'm talking about. That is the thing. Djokovic, he is much more vulnerable against other dudes than, than Rafa Nadal. He really is. Because Djokovic, like when Djokovic lost to Istomin that year in Austral Open, Istomin didn't do his match of his life either, but he took out Djokovic. He took him out. Because Djokovic will give you help on the way, exactly like Feder does as well. Feder also will give you... Milman didn't do his match of his life in that 2018 years open. Fourth round. Milman didn't do his match of his life. Absolutely not. Robredo didn't do his match of his life in that 2013 match against Federer. I believe it was in 2013. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Robredo didn't do his match of his life in that 2013 clash against Federer when he took out Federer. He didn't do his match of his life. That you have to understand, when Djokovic and Federer loses against other dudes... The, the other dude doesn't do their match of his life. They have done a good match, a solid match, but not their match of his life. Same thing with Grigor Dimitrov last year when he took out Fed in that quarterfinal in US Open. Grigor didn't do his match of his life there either. So, Nadal is much steadier against other dudes than what Djokovic is, especially in Grand Slams. So, on my number fourth place, I have uh, Djokovic is much more vulnerable against other dudes, next gens and other players as well. Do you remember the match Rafa lost? The matches Rafa lost against Tsonga, 2008, Astral Open, semi final, 6 2, 6 3, 6 2 to Tsonga. Tsonga dropped only seven games. Tsonga was outrageous. Tsonga was, he performed a match out of this planet. And Rafa even said it after the match when they asked him, what did you believe about Tsonga's match? Do you know what Rafa said? That is not his level. That is for God's sake not his level. He didn't say for God's sake, I'm saying that. But he said that is not his level. Because if that was his level, he would have won every single Grand Slam tournament. But he has not won any Grand Slam tournament. And he did never win any. So what, Rafa was absolutely, completely right. Tsonga did his match of his life and he took out Rafa in that 2008 Astral Open semifinal. 6-2, 6-3, 6-2. Only dropped seven games. The same thing with Del Potro. 
in 2009 as a US Open semi-final. Del Porto did his match of his life against Rafa. Del Porto did even a better match against Rafa than what he did against Federer in the final the same year. Del Porto was crushing the ball against Rafa in that, that 2009 US Open semi-final. He was crushing, he was hammering the ball. When he, when, when he was unleashing those forehands, man, it was like pistol gun. It was like he was r unleashing rackets. Rackets, not tennis balls. Rockets. Rockets, for God's sakes. 6-2, 6-2, 6-2. He gave Rafa only six games. So, Rafa, he can lose against other dudes as well. But when he does, he does it by the other, when the other dudes have made their match of his life. Like Russell, 2012 in Wimbledon. Del Porto, 2009 US Open. Tsonga, 2008 Arsenal Open. But I don't feel that is the case when Djokovic loses against other dudes. And of course, Federer as well. So on my fourth place, I have Djokovic is more vulnerable against other dudes. On my third place, I have the consistency level. Let's face it, guys. Djokovic is not as consistent as Rafa Nadal. And I don't want to be unfair against Djokovic because I'm a fair guy. Nobody is as consistent as Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal is a consistency machine. I have talked about this so many times during my videos in so many years now. What Rafael Nadal does, does on a tennis court, it is not normal. Really, guys, it is not normal. A player to be so consistent for a tennis match, three, four, five hours, it is just unreal, really. Because every player, guys, even Federer and Djokovic, which were one of the greatest tennis players of all time together with two of the, two of the greatest tennis players of all time, together with Rafa Nadal, of course. They can disappear. And Djokovic and Federer, they of course disappear. Nova can just give away a set. Federer can give away matches. We all know that. Rafa, he doesn't disappear. He's there, he's there all the time. He, there, he never takes a break. And if he takes a break, he can take a break for five, ten minutes. He can take a coffee break. That's what he can take. But he doesn't go to a trip to Hawaii. He really doesn't do like Djokovic can do or, or Federer can do. So the consistency, when I say consistent, I mean in matches, not in seasons. Because we all know Fed Djokovic is super consistent as well. You can never be inconsistent if you are the superior world number one, if you are 17 Grand Slam champion. Of course, he's deadly consistent as well. But I mean in matches, in points, in games, Djokovic is not as consistent as Nadal. Djokovic, can, he, he disappears from matches. He really disappears from matches. Like he did against Tsitsipas. For God's sakes, he was leading to love in that French Open semi-final. He had his, the match on his, on his back. He was serving for the match. What did he do? He couldn't serve out the match in that third set. J Tsitsipas took that third set, Tsitsipas took that fourth set, and Tsitsipas took that match to a fifth set. Why? Because Djokovic, he took vacation for two sets. That is not the case with Nadal. So Djokovic is not as consistent during his matches like Rafa Nadal. He just isn't. Rafa, like I've said so many times, Rafa is like a vampire. He wants to drink even your blood. He's not satisfied to eating your flesh and your bones. He wants to drink your blood as well. So on my third place, I have... Novak is not as bloody consistent during matches like Rafa Nadal is. Nobody is. Rafa Nadal is in his own league. I have never seen anything like Rafa Nadal when it comes to consistency. When it comes to be consistent in points in, points out, from the first point to the last point. It is really marvelous to see. On my number second place, I have... Let's face it, guys, Novak Djokovic doesn't have one particular Grand Slam tournament where, he's 95, where he has 95, 95% chances of winning it, like it, is, like, like it is the case with Rafa Nadal. Rafa Nadal, we all know, guys, he has the French Open. For God's sakes, he has won that tournament 13 times now, and for sure not for the last time, if he's healthy. For God's sakes, he has played 102 matches. 102 matches. It is insane. He has won 100 of those matches. 100. And yet of these 102 matches, he has only played two fifth set matches. Two. And won both of them. Isner 2011. Djokovic 2013. So, if you count out, if you count uh, Rafa's 100 and 
two matches he has played in French Open and won 100 of them, it is 98%, guys, 98%. So, and Djokovic, yeah, we don't know Djokovic. He has won Wimbledon, uh, Australian Open eight times, and he's, a, he's the favorite there every single year, but he's not as a favorite like Nadal is in French Open. Forget that. And you know that, guys. I know that you know that. You know that it's that much that you know that Djokovic is not as much as a favorite in Astral Open like Nadal is in French Open. Mm. He isn't. We all know that. Because Djokovic has, he has lost more, more matches than what Nadal has lost in French Open. Djokovic has lost more, more than two matches in Astral Open. That's for sure. And Djokovic... So Djokovic doesn't have that kind of lecture like Nadal has. Djokovic doesn't have it. The same in Wimbledon. Djokovic has won Wimbledon five times. I know that. But he has lost more than two matches in Wimbledon. We all know that. Djokovic is much more vulnerable in Wimbledon what Nadal is in French Open. Djokovic is much more vulnerable in Astral Open what Nadal is in French Open. Djokovic is much more vulnerable in US Open what Nadal is in French Open. Let's face it. And in US Open, Nadal, is, Nadal is, has even won US Open more times than Djokovic. We know that Djokovic has won it three times, Nadal has won it four times. So, on my second place, I have Djokovic doesn't have the lecture, the pleasure, call it what you want, where he can go into a Grand Slam tournament and have 95% chances of winning it. He has 70-80% chances of winning as well open. The same Wimbledon. Uh, and I, I, I can say the same... Uh, US Open. Now, nah, US Open, is, it is not 70-80%. No. US Open is more, more about 50-60% because he has, he, has not, he has not been as successful in US Open like he has been in Wimbledon and Australian Open. So, that is on my second place. Rafa has always his French Open where he is, where he is 95% ch has chances to win the tournament, which is not the case with Novak in Australian Open, Wimbledon and US Open. So, now we have my first place on this category. My first place, guys. My first place, guys, is something that people do not talk way too much about. Something that people do... I'm not hearing that people talk much about this. And, the, and on my first place is... Guys, don't forget that Novak is three Grand Slam titles behind Rafael Nadal. Three! It is not one, it is not two, it is, it is not three. And some of you can say, but Inter, why are you doing some big deal of this? Three is not much. Yeah, guys, I am doing a big deal of this. You know why? Because it is much. Especially this late in their careers. It is much, my tennis friends all around the world. They are not 25 years old anymore. Rafa is 34, Novak is 33. They, three Grand Slam titles is much. To win Grand Slam titles is not walk in the park, not even for these two superior tennis players. Look how difficult it was for Novak to win his two last Grand Slam tournaments that he has won. Australia Open earlier this year, we know how he won it. It was not an easy final he had against team. He was forced to go to the fifth set against team. He was, he was in the team was leading that final 2-1. And we all know what happened for, with Novak in that Wimbledon final last year. We all know that. Roger should have won that final. If Roger was more, more clutch, if Roger was more... If Roger could have delivered better in the big, in the big moments. Roger had, for God's sake, two championship points in his own serve. Of course, Roger should have won that match. But he didn't. He didn't. That match could have gone either way. But Novak... He won it. He won it deservedly. I'm not taking any way away from him. He's a, he is a clutch monster in big points, Novak. You have to give that to him. But he could easily have lost that Wimbledon final last year, Novak Djokovic. He, he could have done it. And he could have lost the Asselopen final as well against team. But he won it. But what I want to say is that it is not a walk in the park to win Grand Slam titles for Novak Djokovic either nowadays. And to be three behind the guy like Rafael Nadal, who has a Grand Slam tournament like French Open, when he is 95%, where he has 95% chances of winning it, say, this Astral Open will be huge for Novak Djokovic. It is a must-win tournament for him. Because if he doesn't win, it, it will not be good for Novak Djokovic. He will still be behind. 
And Rafa has 95% chance of winning a French Open. So if Nova doesn't win a Australian Open, Rafa most likely will, will, will win French Open. He will be four ahead of Novak. Then Novak can forget catching Rafa Nadal. He can forget it. So this Astral Open is really crucial for Novak Djokovic. It's a must-win tournament for Novak Djokovic, in my opinion. And even if he wins it, say Novak wins it, which he has a great chance of doing it, because he has done it eight times, Rafa will win three, four, five months later the French Open. And will still be three ahead of Novak Djokovic with 21 if Novak wins Astral Open with 18. And and you do, you can have not you can have you cannot have any guarantees that Novak will win Wimbledon. It will not be easy, it will not be easy winning Wimbledon. And we all know as U.S. Open Novak has not been deadly successful in winning U.S. Open the last couple of years. He has won it only three times and lost five finals there. So, on number first place is why Rafa Nadal. Why Novak Djokovic will not end up with more slams is because he is three Grand Slam titles behind Rafa Nadal. And that is a lot. That is much more than what you guys seem to believe and what you guys seem to realize. But guys, guys how I see the thing, this is my opinion, I see Novak Djokovic having two, great, two more great years. When I say two more great years, I mean it where he will win multiple slams. I think Novak will win... He has chances of winning one or two slams in 2021 and has chances to win one or two Grand Slam titles in 2022. The last... The, the, these, these two years ahead of him in 2021 and 2022, I think Novak Djokovic will be a big threat of winning slams. Definitely. He can win four or five Grand Slam titles these two upcoming years. But in 2023 where Novak will be 36 years old. I really don't see Novak Djokovic winning many slams when he's, 30, when he's 36 years old. I really don't do. I truly believe that players like Tsitsipas, Zverev, Medvedev, even maybe a, a, a super talented player who hits the ball really clean and heavy, like Yannick Sinner, will have big chances of defeating Novak Djokovic in the Grand Slams. They maybe will do it er even earlier. I would not be surprised if they take him out earlier, already next year maybe. But in 2023, players like Medvedev, Tsitsipas, Zverev and definitely Sinner, they will give Novak Djokovic defeats in the Slams in 2023. I, I guarantee, not guarantee, but I, I'm... Uh, almost convinced about that. I'm pretty certain about this prediction. In 2023, when Novak is 36 years old, he will not be winning any many majors. Maybe one. Maybe one I can see Novak winning as most as 36 years old. And some of you can say, but for God's sake, Inter, Roger Federer has won his 20th Grand Slam title as 36, as 36 years old two years ago in Astral Open. Guys, stop comparing Djokovic and Federer. For God's sake, stop. They don't have sim similar tennis styles. Novak Djokovic is deep, deep inside of him, a grinder, a, a counter-puncher. A counter-puncher he is. He's not an ultra-aggressive tennis player like Novak, like Federer. He doesn't have as great a serve like Federer. He doesn't have a, as great forehand as Federer. He, he cannot end the points as fast as Federer. And, and, and as older Novak gets, as harder will it become, it, it, it will be for him to finish the points off fast. It will be harder for him because he cannot, he, he's not as good of a shot maker as Federer is. So just because Federer has won his 20th Grand Slam title as, 30, as 36 years old, that doesn't necessarily mean that Djokovic will do the same. So I can see Djokovic being really successful in two more years, 2021 and 2022. In the 2023 season, Djokovic will decline big times, really big times. I can see Djokovic ending his Grand Slam title, ending his Grand Slam career, his, his career with 21, 22 Grand Slam titles as most. As most. Rafa, I can see ending his Grand Slam uh, career with 23, 24 Grand Slam titles because he has always the French. And as long as Rafa is healthy, it will not be easy taking Rafa Nadal down. For God's sakes, he won just recently French Open without dropping one single set as 34 years old. As 34 years old. 
So there you have my top five reasons, guys. On number fifth place, Novak Djokovic, why he will not win most Grand Slam titles when it's all said and done. He's not as good of a shot maker like Rafa Dal is in, his, in this later stage of his career. On number fourth place, the next gen, other dudes, you name it. Djokovic is more vulnerable against other players than what, than what Nadal is, especially in slams. On number third place, Djokovic is not as consistent during tennis matches from the first to the last point as Rafa Dal is. On number second place, Djokovic doesn't have any 95% chances to win a Grand Slam tournament a la Rafa Nadal like he has in French Open. On number fifth, on, on, my, on number first place, on, on, on our second place, that was on our second place. On our first place, Djokovic is st still three Grand Slam titles behind Rafa Nadal, and that is a lot more than you guys seem to believe. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye bye.